Hey everybody, welcome back. Still here, still wearing the same shirt, still 46 wins in a row. And hey, on that run, I actually took some risks. Don't, don't say I never take any risks. I take minimal risks until it seems like I've taken too much risk. And then I tighten up and try to... Oh! We're in trouble? Spirit hearts? Okay, we're actually... We're more in trouble than I thought we would be. Wait this one out. Pop it down. Perfect timing. You knew we were getting spirit hearts. We now have less to fear. We're okay. Look at that. That curse room was just a little nasty. Still doing well. Still coming up with uh, insane ideas that make no sense. Hey, we've got pre-sliced bread. You know what we should come up with next? Um, how about... Um, <laughs> hear me out here. Hold on. I'm going to get there. Um, uh, Pre-toasted bread. How about that? What if they sold... No, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know if, 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 is it like self-aware when people say the best thing since sliced bread? I guess people don't really say it anymore, but in like, you know, the 1920s, it was like a thing. Because I hate to tell you this, and this is not just coming from a place of snobbery. It's coming from a place of like, uh, I'm trying to just, I'm asking an honest question. Sliced bread, more convenient than unsliced bread, but tends to be worse. Like any pre-sliced loaf of bread you buy in a grocery store tends to be not as good as like a, an unsliced, unsliced loaf that you would get at the grocery store and not even close to an unsliced loaf that you would get at like a bakery. Now, there is an exception. I'll pay for convenience in, in my life. I'm not, a, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, bread? Oh, haha, <laughs> why don't I just buy my own flour at the grocery store and make my own bread? It's really easy. Oh, flour? <laughs> why don't I just... um buy my own land and then plant my own wheat, harvest my own wheat, mill it into flour and then use that flour to make my own bread, you know? Oh, land? <laughs> Why don't I just make my own land for, you know, you get, you get, you could take it back to the point of absurdity. It's a, an argument towards absurdity, don't get me wrong. Hold on here, there's, there's something to this. We can get to the, the seam in the library, I think. We just got it, the, the wickedly talented library seam. I think we gotta find secret room though. Which is not there. Could be there. Could be there. Man, that's a lot of possible locations. Let's see if we get a key from the boss first. Um, anyway, long story short. I'll pay for convenience. But you can sometimes like go to a bakery, be like, hey, can I get that olive loaf? In all likelihood, they'll, they'll say yes, unless you've been banned from the premises. Then you can say, hey, could you slice it for me? Most of the time, they will say yes. Now, at the risk of making myself sound like uh, like I don't support local businesses, there are a couple of bakeries I've been to here in Vancouver where when I asked them to slice it, they say, oh, sorry, we don't have a slicer. I'm sorry to tell you. That means it's probably the last time I'm coming to your bakery. I don't know if it's that you don't have a slicer because the slicer is expensive or you don't have a slicer because it's like, antithetical to the concept of good bread that you can't slice it because it'll stale out a little faster but I don't think the customer is always right but I think if the customer asks the bakery if you can slice the bread then the answer is yes and it's not like vindictive I'm not like I'll never come back here because you don't have a slicer and that's offensive to me it's because like if you don't have a slicer I gotta slice it at home I get crumbs all over the floor and then Kate's talking to me about how, like, where these breadcrumbs come from. And I'm like, it just creates a whole headache for me that doesn't have to exist. Let's just put it that way. But I'm, I'm, a, big, uh, I'm a big proponent of bread. Look, it doesn't get better than fresh baked at home. Don't get me wrong. But the difference between, like, uh, a, st a store-bought, like, a, a, a grocery store-bought bread that is like pre-sliced it's manufactured in you know silver Hill, hills minnesota and then shipped across the continent and I, the difference between that and something at least like baked locally and shipped into the grocery store every day or two oh man it makes a big difference not a big difference in terms of price but a big difference in terms of quality for sure life's too short to eat bad bread now if you gotta if you it's not the macro baked bread is necessarily all bad if you got a great macro baked bread and you love it then stick with it but i'm just saying if you did a blind taste test to like store-bought pre-sliced bread with uh any bakery's bread i mean come on it's got no shot 
Oh! Okay, that honestly could have killed me in real life. I could have had a heart attack. I'm sick right now. I'm weak. I have diminished faculties. How dare you try something like that? No, wait, this is amazing. It's a very good item for me. I think, I don't know how much HP we have exactly, so I'm going to get this heart, even at the cost of our last bomb, just because I'm a little scared. And the reason I don't bake my own bread, honestly, I just don't think I'm at this stage in my life right now. I don't have time, and again, this is not bragging about being busy. I think in my early 20s, I definitely, well, in, in my 20s, just full stop, I fell victim to bragging about how busy I am. Oh, I'd love to do that, but I'm just so busy. I don't know about you guys. You guys probably got nothing going on. I'm so busy. I couldn't possibly, oh, work out every day? I can't do that. I'm so busy recording Isaac episodes. But, like, now I genuinely am, like, I, it, I'm saying it as a lamentation. Don't hit me in here. I am, I'm too busy to take on a new hobby. <laughs> I need to wait for things to chill out a little bit and then maybe I can recapture a little bit of like who I am as a person and then I can start to talk about baking my own bread. Because I, I do think it's one of those things. I don't mind doing, as much as I love convenience, I don't mind doing things the long way um, when I got the time. My dad uh, bakes his own bread as well. It's good for him. You know, he was uh, also like a workaholic. And then he started to slow his life down. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to start baking my own bread. Now he's like a bread guy. He's always talking to me about the, the ear on his bread. You know, like when you, when you slice it just right before it goes into the oven. So it gets that curl that comes up on the bread. And he's talking about the air pockets. And he's talking about this sourdough starter is like... I, I wish he was as proud of me as he is as, of his sourdough starter. That's a joke. He's very proud of me. He messages me. Uh, he gives me text messages like once a week to congratulate me on my ongoing progress on my Peloton. I'd say thank you, Dad. Dad I really appreciate it. I'm just not ready for it yet. But one one day, maybe maybe in my mid-40s. You can look forward to some bread-based conversations. You know what? I'm a simple man. I like the D6, but I love doing damage. Give me one of these. I kind of wish I'd started doing it in my... Uh... Oops. In my 20s. Because then I'd probably be like too into it now to stop. We should check it out at least. You know how they say like the best time to plant a tree was... Uh... 20 years ago, the second best time is right now. That's true. Unless right now is like a really bad time for you. People say it as if it's always true. But that's not true. Sometimes that's false. What? what uh, oh, really? The second best... The, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. Uh, well, right now, the forest is on fire. Uh, so maybe, can I wait a day? Can I have your permission to wait a day? Right now, the soil has no nutrients in it. Can we wait for some of the uh, decomposing leaves in the litter uh, to decompose to the point where there's nitrogen and phosphorus back in the soil so the seeds can actually, uh, you know, have a chance to take hold? Or, or are we just going to start gardening by metaphor from this point onwards? That's what I thought, okay? So don't, don't freaking uh, pee on my face and tell me it's raining. Don't, don't pee in my cup and tell me it's McDonald's Sprite. Like, we're all adults. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm just spitballing. Dead Tooth. I walked all the way back for Dead Tooth. If I wanted to have Dead Tooth, I'd talk to a bad dentist, okay? It does remind me. Man, I have not been to a dentist in, like, a year and a half. That's not even that long. I'm sure there's going to be some people out here that are, like, I haven't been to a dentist in 10 years. You should change that. Like, I know it's it's expensive, and maybe it's you're like, nothing's wrong. Well, that's why you go to the dentist, just so that, like, a doctor can tell you that. Because you telling me nothing's wrong with your teeth doesn't mean anything for, to me if you're just, like, a person. You know, I, I need, like, a professional to look at that. Why haven't I been to the dentist? So check this out. 
We used to go to a dentist that was like, it was Kate's childhood dentist, but we only went to appointments on Saturdays because like most people, we work throughout the week. Um, we're lucky they were open on Saturdays, honestly. Um, but we had to drive across town, like to another city when we live in a city. Now, when you pay city prices to live in a city, you start to get like really annoyed when you have to leave the city to do stuff. You're like, why isn't the point? Aren't we paying such high prices to live here because everything's here? And now I got to leave in order to access it. Like, obviously, there's, you know, thousands of dentists within Vancouver. Why am I driving out to Burnaby to go to a dentist? So I said, we got to like break up with this dentist. We got to find the dentist in Vancouver and then start and then Kate said, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. You know, we're wasting like 30 minutes driving each way on a Saturday. Then we're both getting our appointments. Someone has to look after the baby like during each appointment. So it was like 30 minute drive. I have an hour long appointment. She looks after the baby. She has an hour long appointment. I look after the baby 30 minute drive home. Like it ate up, it ate up half your weekend basically like right there. It, even more than that because you can't eat for like 30 minutes afterwards. Because of the dang fluoride, man. You can't even, like, go out for lunch afterwards. Which is a lot of, like, what's keeping the North American family together, I think. Is, like, going out for, like, running an errand and then being like, hey, let's get some lunch afterwards. At least that's, it's keeping me going. Two of diamonds. Ace of spades. Give me two of diamonds. Two of diamonds. I've got a stars card. Ace of spades? Ace of spades is pretty good. The stars card is very convenient. You know what we could do? Give me a second here. I think I did this very wrong. No, maybe I did it right, actually. Give me the stars. Walk me out. Grab Ace of Spades. Turn into keys. Ace of spades. And then open up one of these and see what you get. Open up the other one, see what you get. I'm willing to give it a chance. Ooh, not really worth it, probably. Unless... I don't remember what I got from the shop this time. We'll just go down. It couldn't have been that good if I wasn't excited by it. And then, uh, so you, stop me, by the way. Sorry, I hit my footrest there. Stop me if you know where this one's going. I think you could probably figure it out for yourself pretty quick. I haven't been back to the dentist since because the my old dentist made appointments for me like automatically every six months. And even though I resented it, the drive at least, I would make the drive. Now... It's completely in my own court. I know that I have to go to the dentist, but you know, as my excuse is for everything, I'm like, but I'm busy, I'll do it next month. And then next month, like something comes up and I'm like, I couldn't possibly do it this month. I'll just do it next month instead. So I think it's just gonna be like that over and over until I'm like, you know, in my early forties, then I'm gonna go to the dentist and I'm gonna be like, hey doc, it's been like 12 years. And he's gonna be like, yeah, I know. Here's like, you need to have like seven root canals. I mean, I take care of my teeth, but you know, the older you get, things just start happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. I'm not saying you can't have perfectly healthy teeth in the, your, you know, in the old age. I'm just saying that as you get older, things just sometimes, not universally, but sometimes just start going wrong. I always think about how in chat, like sometimes we'll talk about like, you know, exercise or diet or health and fitness or something like that. Someone in chat will be like, uh, I just eat whatever I want, but like not too much and I'm in good shape and then I'm like how old are you and they're like 19 and I'm like okay Then let me know how that's working out for you like when you when you're 25 much less like 30 33 33.8 like I am right now for example hypothetically speaking of course Like you got a ways to go that uh, if anything you should be mad that you know that's part of your life is so easy because it's not forcing you to build good habits when it's easiest to build them. Instead, you're going to build up all these habits uh, that are maladaptive and then you're going to have to change them when you're like in your 40s and you got other stuff going on that's like equally important. You're going to... Uh, now I got to... I got to learn how to eat right and I got to go to my job every day? That's crazy. Like, like the Malcolm in the Middle theme song said, life is unfair. Why can't the dentist just come to my house? Hey, am I crazy? Or does it seem insane that we used to live in a world where a doctor made house calls? Nowadays, you can't even... Like, that's the... Pro there's, sorry, I'm trying to find the best way to get to the joke here. That's how the progression has happened. Back in the day, the doctor used to come to your house. 
Then the doctor made their own house and was happy to see you. Hey, thanks for coming into the clinic. Nowadays, the doctor doesn't want anything to do with you unless you're already dying. What are you doing here? You're healthy. Yeah, I just want to make sure like I'm not getting sick. No, 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 that's not what we're here for. Just come in when you get sick. And then we'll say, why didn't you come in sooner? When you're just trying to do some preventative maintenance? No, 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 you don't come here, okay? We're too busy for that. Okay, I, I, sorry, I'm, I, people don't want my healthcare takes, mostly because I don't work in the industry. That's true. It's very true. It's very valid. I have long said I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't really want panic button. Spider mod is like, it's pretty good. Is it worth blowing the credit card for? I mean, it's, people will be like, it's 29 cents. It's not, though. It's Spider Mod. Like, I don't think that's 29 cents worth of value, although it is pretty good. It's the Hanged Man. Panic button I don't want. Then I want to see if, like, this is Yera. It's uh, on Seuss. What is the Empress card? Two health, one tier, 60 seconds. Okay, I'll take Poke Go and just get the heck out of town. It's not a bad run so far, but it is missing that certain je ne sais quoi. Like, I was talking to my mom about it when she was in Vancouver, and she was like, yeah, you know, like, when I was a kid, there was, like, a doctor in our town, and if you got sick, you would just call, your mom would call the doctor. Like, doesn't that seem incredibly quaint? That you would get a cold, go to the, have your mom call the doctor, the doctor would come to your house and be like, yes, it's a cold? That seems idyllic. Is that really the way it used to work? Nowadays, you're going to... And I, this is like a little back in my day, I suppose. I'm not trying to, to go there. I want angel deals, man. Those are not good enough. But like, I had... If you haven't been following maybe like how things have gone for me since I stopped doing Isaac episodes, I got um, simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter infections uh, from foodborne illness in June and, and early July. Uh, it got to the point where, and it, stop me if you've heard this before, because many people are sick of hearing about it, but it was like an a, like important experience in my life. Um, it got to the point where, like, after a couple weeks of experiencing symptoms, I had a spreading red mark that uh, started on my left leg, and then uh, spread all the way up my left leg, then spread to my right leg, and was so painful to the touch that I couldn't wear pants. Because if I wore pants, the pant leg rubbing up against the area was too painful for me to, like, walk and sustain. But I really wanted to wear pants because my legs looked disgusting. Now, this is a pre... Like, like, let me... This is just my current... This is a snapshot of, the, of my experience with the healthcare industry. After um, two weeks of symptoms, so pre-leg disaster i went to urgent care uh, i got very lucky i showed up at the urgent care right as they opened i was like the third last person to get in before they capped the line i was there for like six hours after six hours what did the what did they say to me you're probably typically these bouts of diarrhea can last up to two weeks i was on like 13 days so they were like just wait and see for a couple days what happens and go buy some emodium from the pharmacy Okay, that was like definitely uh, a good use of my day. So, uh, spoilers, I got some Imodium and things still didn't get better. So like six days later, I went to the emergency room. This was near the start of the, um, of the rash spreading up my leg or the sepsis or whatever it was. Um, and uh, I talked to an, a doctor. I was in the ER. Thankfully this time, at least like the admitting... Uh, physicians and nurses were like, this guy doesn't look right. So they got me in a lot faster than at the urgent care. And uh, the doctor said, we're going to fix you right up, buddy. And I wanted to cry. I was like, finally, someone's taking me seriously. Came back into the room like half an hour later and said, I don't know if I'm qualified to handle this. So I'm going to refer you to an internist, like an internal medicine specialist. They gave me an appointment that was like two months out Thankfully, a couple of days later, they called me and said, hey, we have a cancellation. Can you come in tomorrow? I came in tomorrow and that doctor saved my life and said, you don't look right, man. Like we're going to, they ran a CT scan. They ran 
blood tests, they ran fecal tests, they gave me antibiotics that day, thankfully. And you're telling me in 1970, your kid had a cold? You could just call a doctor, a doctor would come to your freaking house and be like, yep, that's a cold. What happened, man? <laughs> Where did it all go? We used to live in a proper country. I was mad at my mom. I know it's not fair. Did I did I exchange some harsh words? No, are you crazy? I love her. I'm the fruit of her loins. Probably shouldn't phrase it like that. It's true though. Either way. Listen, I'm okay. And at the end of the day, it is thanks to the hard work and insight of a doctor that, you know, I I didn't suffer a worse fate. But at the same time, like I was in a state, man. I had, to, I had to fight for my freaking life out there. Meanwhile, in the 1970s, people were, like, smoking and drinking while pregnant. Caught their kids smoking a cigarette. They forced them to smoke a whole pack. Meanwhile, whenever anything went wrong with your body, the doctor came to your house. Probably gave, like, my eight-year-old mom a, a, a dose of morphine and said, oh, she'll sleep it off. Like... Is it, is it so much to just want that for myself? <laughs> that, that's what it all comes down to, okay? Oh, no. It's like the one item I didn't want here. Anyway, so I don't hold a grudge. I am going to send that doctor, like, a very nice Christmas card. And I don't want to flex. I might include, like, a gift card in it. I'm not going to give her cash. Something about, like, give... In a, in, when you have public health care, giving cash to a doctor seems like you're crossing some kind of ethical line. Like, you're, you're, you're leaving the doctor in an ethical quandary. But, I mean, who's going to say no to, like, a $100 gift certificate to the keg or something like that, right? What are we on? Depths? Depths 2? This is horrendous, dude. I'm in a lot of trouble. Gift certificates. Gift certificates are money. They're gifts. It's a different story in the eyes of the law, probably. Anyway. I think we should bring back house calls, man. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> I would just like to be able to see my doctor more regularly. And then my, my favorite part of this story, because it doesn't involve me almost dying, is that it was like very difficult for me to get in touch with my doctor while this crisis was ongoing, because she's busy. And I, I do respect that, but like... I would call into my doctor's office and be like, I'm in trouble. And they'd be like, well, we'll pencil you in, like, next July. Uh, you have an emergency? Okay, uh, see you in eight months. But then, like, after... Bro, I don't want to brag, okay? I don't want to brag. After, like, I had this food poisoning issue, she became obsessed with me. She was calling me, like, every day. Oh, my God, are you okay? Oh, uh, our negligence almost led to you, uh leaving your child without a father like we're so sorry i was like ah no big deal i'll get over it hey we got you a referral to like an infectious disease specialist so we can like check out uh you know what might have caused that in the first place hey we cultured that bacteria that was in your uh stool sample um it turns out it's resistant to the very antibiotic that we uh prescribed to treat you i guess it means that you're just built different because you managed to fight off the infection regardless yeah, that's pretty true, I suppose. I don't know. Built different, huh? I like the sounds of that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that story because you're going to be hearing it a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. I think we need this. Ah! I'm actually, like, a little frightened for this one. It's the, it's the craziest thing that's happened to me this year, for sure. And hopefully maintains that title for... You know, the rest of my life, maybe? Unless we get some, like, crazy good news. Like, well, you won the lottery despite never even buying a ticket. <laughs> That'd be sick. That would be awesome. It's 26 cents. It must be good. Well, well worth it. How about this one? Smelter. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Certainly not bad. You know what? We've been pumping money into this thing a little bit. Why would you? Why would you do that? Is something wrong with you? I mean, I'm going to level with you. We got some problems, man. Especially with Cursed Eye. Like, nothing in life is guaranteed, including this run. Jumper cables actually seems fairly helpful, but... 
Like by and large, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit scared. But what it all comes down to, my friends, is that everything's going to be quite all right cuz I got one hand in my pocket and the other one is hailing a taxi cab. I think is it I, th I think so. Yeah. I've got faith this one's popping right now. One more. Never should have done it. But imagine, dude, you got to do it for the vine, as the kids say these days. These days? I don't know. Vine, what was that? It was like a 2014 thing, 2013. Woo! But that backflip, though. Crazy to think that the kids who grew up with Vine are now running for president of the United States of America. It's crazy. They grow up so fast. You know what? We've tried a lot of old presidents. I say we. I mean, it's not like we've got a, a much different culture up here in Canada. I think we should just like just do a full send once. I think we should have like a kid president. Like you don't have to make it like a regular thing. I think that could be dangerous. But I think it, we should just have like one president that's like 15. Just to see, man. We've tried the rest. We tried a bunch of old dudes. What if we try to get, like, some new blood involved? I think it'd be kind of sick to have a 15-year-old a president. For real. No cap. Would love to know your thoughts on this. I don't, I don't want that angel statue. I don't need it. Get away from me. You don't think so? You disagree? Okay, hear me out. The sitting president should always be the oldest person in the country because they've lived the longest. They should get something for that. Like, if you make it to be the oldest person in the country, you should get to be in charge for a little bit. And let's be honest, I know this sounds macabre. Listen, you're not going to need term limits. If you got, like, a 114-year-old... Statistically speaking, probably a woman in charge of the country. Because most, I'm sorry to tell you, lads, most of us, we, we tend not to make it to 100. There's some, I know you're like, I'm going to be one of the ones that does. Okay, more power to you. It's possible. I would love to say that I'm going to be one of the ones. I know There's also like, people are really bad. And I don't really have any data to back this up, but let's pretend I'm just right. People are really bad at predicting, like, their own lifespan, I think. Like, when I was in my 20s, you would talk to peers, and sometimes they would be like, yeah, man, I don't see myself making it to 30. You're like, really? Like, I'm not... Barring an accident, which could always happen, or an illness, which can happen, but is rarer the younger you are, obviously. Like, most people... I mean, statistically, if you survive, like, your birth... There's probably like at least a 92% chance you're making it to 30. So that seems like a crazy claim to me. Then sometimes, like in the same breath, equally delusional people would be like, you know what? I think I'm making it to 100. I think people have a crazy idea. Like they don't understand like variance. You know, I, I think I read a stat that was like <laughs> how, how the best uh, discussions start. I think I read a stat, but... It was like one in 100,000 men makes it to be like age one in 100, or age 100. Listen, I'm not living a one in 100,000 lifestyle right now. And I know we, people are actually under the misconception that if you live unhealthily, you're more likely to live longer. Like my grandma, uh, she smoked and she drank and she eats fast food and she lived to be 101. Yeah, what did she ha She had a thimble of, of whiskey after dinner on Thanksgiving. Come on, your grandma's not slamming back, like, you know, a 30 rack of PBR over the course of a weekend. If she is, like, give her my number. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't have a line there. We're gonna die, dude, my streak. Like, I'm not saying that if you live the picture of health, you're going to guarantee that you're going to live to be 100. I just think, like, you know, there's... It's like winning the lottery. Like, you can give yourself a lot of chance. Like, if you live... If you live a healthy lifestyle, you might buy yourself more tickets. 
You know, you can still lose to somebody who just happened to buy one ticket, but... Help. I don't know. It's not a good metaphor. Let's just put it that way. It's not a good metaphor. Please. Please. I need this. The tower. That I don't know if you would concoct a... Wow, what a waste. Uh, I don't know if you can concoct like a worse card for us to get there. What do you think about a second secret room, though? Uh, I wish I pushed that. That would have been helpful. No, not there. Oh, we already saw the second secret room. Pip, I don't think he's heard of second breakfast. That's painful. Like, I'll just be honest with you. I don't think I'm living to 100. It could have. I could be very wrong for the record, but yeah, we're dead. Now, 80, I would like, I would think that 80 is in the, it's in the realm of possibility. Not guaranteed, but like, it's the average male lifespan right now is like 78. Maybe some advantages from modern medicine coming in. I think, I, you know, I'm dead. There we go. 80 is a possibility. 100, let's not be ridiculous. Let's not start counting our chickens. Hey, anyway. That's the 47 streak over, and you know what? I feel no pain in my body. I'm just having fun playing Isaac. And you know what? Losing with Isaac also means that we can play more as Isaac, because obviously it's not too easy if I just lost. Hey, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and I'll see you next time. See ya!